So if you've been following the channel at all, you'll know that I recently switched over from using Mac OS to using Linux full time for everything, whether it's for YouTube, content creation, and in my personal life. Now tonight, I just wanna have a little bit of tequila with you guys and then talk about tech, talk about some developments and some stuff that has come up. And specifically, I kind of want to talk about GPUs in Linux. Now, I currently have a Radeon RX 6950 XT. And for basically everything, it's been great. However, I did find a minor hiccup. And I'm wondering if it's something on my end or if I need to just get a different GPU. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about in this video. But first... Let's try our tequila. Mm, smells good. Cheers. So I was using Caden Live to do all of my video editing, and that's kind of going to be the premise of the video. And Caden Live doesn't really have a lot of GPU acceleration, so it's using my CPU to do most of the heavy lifting, which, you know, for the most part is completely fine. I've started to transition to using DaVinci Resolve Studio, and I really like how they've added a lot of features that make it a lot like Final Cut Pro, which is what I came from. And <clears throat> I absolutely love how I can now scrub the timeline by holding down a hotkey, and it makes it work almost, almost like the magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro. And so I'm gonna try and do all of the editing for this video in DaVinci Resolve, but I have run into a little bit of a snag as I've been working on it, and I decided I just wanted to kind of talk about it and make a, like a full-blown video about the topic. So I've noticed that I'm, my, my GPU is not being entirely utilized when using Resolve, and I've found that I've run into like some lag and stuttering, and I'm not doing anything crazy. So I'm using a Sony A7 Mark III, I'm shooting in 4K, 24 frames per second, and I think it's 8-bit. I don't think the A7 Mark III can do 10-bit. I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Whatever the highest setting is in the camera is what I have it set to, but I am set to 24 frames per second. Now, it's really laggy, and I don't know why. It's really laggy until it caches out, and then it's pretty much fine. But to get to the point where everything's cached, you kind of have to stay in this like finite area on the timeline and it's, it kind of sucks. It's just, it screws up my entire workflow and how I edit videos. And if you move it all, it just, it has to re-render everything. And even if I'm using proxies, so I know, I know someone's going to hit me up in the comments and they're just like, just use proxies. But I had proxies turned on and I ran into the exact same issue. So I did some digging. I found out a lot of stuff. I'm going to share that with you. But first, I want to let you know that I actually built a, we'll call it a test bench, out of some spare parts. So my son is an avid gamer, so he upgrades his PC all the time. So he's got the latest stuff so he can get good frame rates in whatever games it is that he plays. So we had some stuff laying around, and I'll put the specs up on the screen, but that bad boy there in the corner I threw together, and it's got an NVIDIA GPU in it. And I did some testing. I kind of want to share the testing with you. And then I kind of want to just talk about whether this is an issue that I can fix because I honestly don't know. But if I can, it's going to save me a lot of money. So if there's anybody out there that knows how to fix this, that'd be great. But otherwise, I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to buy a different GPU and cross over to the dark side. So I've never been like team green or team red or anything like that. I've been more of a best bang for your buck kind of guy. And with that, I don't really give a crap about all your fancy charts and your frame rates and all that stuff. I want to know how well the damn thing is going to work for everyday use. So like when I'm putting video clips on a timeline, is it going to lag? When I'm scrubbing the timeline, is it going to lag? I don't give a crap what you get in cyberpunk whatever or... Diablo, whatever, Battlefield 6, or whatever games people are playing these days, that just doesn't doesn't mean anything to me. I don't care about a, a benchmark score that says that this is better than that. It's just, like, does it lag? That's really what I want to know. If the answer is no, 
then we're good. Anyway, now that we got all of that out of the way, let's hop on over to the PC and I'm going to show you what I found and show you the testing that I've done. And then we can kind of just talk about what's going on. And if anybody at any point knows how to fix this, hit me up down in the comments. Okay, so we're going to start out over on my actual main editing rig. I'm going to show you what I have set up here, and we're just going to do a baseline. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in terms of lag. Now, overall, the timeline itself just does not feel smooth. And the only way I can show you that or replicate this because of the way DaVinci Resolve caches stuff is to do it on the actual delivery tab. And that's because I ran into the problem and then decided I wanted to make a video about it. So everything's already cached on my computer. So if I were to go to the edit tab, we, I don't really have that big of an issue. Depending on where I'm at on the timeline, it kind of stutters a little bit, but for the most part, a lot of the stuff's already cached. So here on the actual delivery tab, it has to render everything on the fly. So nothing is cached. And so you'll see here that the timeline just doesn't feel smooth. And as I move this, you'll see that the picture kind of just jumps around and lags behind a little bit as to what I'm doing and where I'm moving my actual cursor. Now, you'll see that my render time up here in the right-hand corner was like a little over four minutes for rendering this entire video, which isn't bad. I don't really care about render times that much. So it's utilizing the GPU in terms of actually just rendering the file, but for whatever reason, when I'm doing playback or doing anything on the edit tab, it, it's having a really hard time and just struggling rendering that. Now, I did go through and I changed some settings. So I did go in to the GPU and memory configuration and it had everything pre-selected to auto. I unselected all that stuff even though I only have one GPU and I just made sure it was on OpenCL. Now, I did also go in and change everything from ProRes for what it uses to create proxies and caching to a different file format and it was like DNXHR, I believe, HRHQ or something like that. I'll, I'll throw it down here below because I don't remember it off the top of my head. But uh, for the sake of time, I did this for a baseline. So I just wanted to show you this. And then I used Raiden Top and I used BTOP to just kind of get some metrics or some numbers for the baseline with my file here playing in the timeline. My GPU never exceeded 18% utilization. It kind of bounced around a lot, but it never exceeded 18%. It also used just a little above three gigabytes worth of VRAM out of the 16 that it has total. And then my CPU hovered around 10% utilization. Now, if we hop over to the actual test bench that we built, I did the exact same thing. So I copied and exported all the files from DaVinci Resolve Studio on my main editing rig. And I transferred all of that over to the test bench. And then I reran the exact same test. And what you'll see is it's actually really interesting. So the baseline on the NVIDIA card, it... <clears throat> it used more of the actual VRAM. So I was using a little over five gig of VRAM and the GPU pretty much stayed at around 18 to 20% constantly uh, running the baseline test. And then my CPU stayed around 6% or so. Now, I will tell you that it did not utilize any of the encoders or decoders that are built into the 12th gen i7 that's in the test bench because for whatever reason Resolve in Linux just doesn't have the ability to use Intel QuickSync or utilize any of the stuff that's built into the processor. So there is no advantage there uh, for the actual test bench because I know it's not something that AMD has an equivalent of at least in the 5900X that I have. So uh, it seems to be a somewhat fair fight-ish other than my video card is a little bit stronger on paper in my main editing rig. But what's interesting is the timeline was actually really smooth. So you'll see here that when we play back the actual file on Resolve, so I didn't do anything in the edit tab. I started recording as soon as I opened this up. So it's the first time this was actually opened and utilized on this system. And you'll see that the timeline was actually really smooth. It played back. I got 23.976 frames per second or 
whatever it is that's basically 24 frames per second. And there were no issues at all. It didn't lag. It didn't stutter. I was able to move things around. I could add effects and it didn't, it didn't croak on me like my AMD card did. And then for the settings, it was all the same. I only have one GPU in here, but I had the Nvidia card selected. So now what I wanted to do, because I didn't have any problems with the Nvidia card, I ended up just adding 10 of the exact same timeline, 10 of the exact same video on the timeline, and I just stacked them all on top of each other. And then I did a playback on that. And what's interesting is on the test bench with the Nvidia card, it didn't have any problems at all. It didn't even bat an eye. But if we looked at the utilization of the actual stats for the CPU and the GPU, you'll see that the, the GPU was maxed out. So it was at 99%. And then my actual CPU was at 14, 15%. And it, it kind of would bounce around a little bit, but the GPU stayed maxed at 99%. And it was using 7.46 gig out of the 8 gig of VRAM on the 3070 Ti. But it didn't have any problems. Like it didn't stutter, like I said. And there were there were no issues there. Now I did run the exact same test on the actual Radeon. And I mean, I was already having problems with the base timeline. So as you can imagine, I had all kinds of dropped frames. And it didn't perform very well at all. And I, I can put some of the metrics up here to show you the utilization of the actual AMD card so you can see that. And if anybody knows if there's anything I can do to actually resolve this with my AMD card, that'd be great. But I think all, all things are indicating that I just need to switch to an NVIDIA GPU. Now, I wanted to see how far I could take this with the NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti because it was performing so well. So I stacked another 10 on top. And so that gave me 20 timelines that were 4K that all had color grading and like all of the same stuff built into it. Nothing crazy. I had a, a light color grade. I used a couple of effects that were built into Resolve Studio. And then I... I think that was about it. I adjust some stuff for the audio, but anyway, uh, I did, I did that and I was still at 99% utilization on the GPU and I was still using the same amount of memory. Uh, I imagine it doesn't let you use the full eight gig so that the car doesn't like crash, so to speak. But my CPU utilization didn't really go any higher than what it did when I only had 10 clips on there. And so I think the GPU, at least on the test bench, is probably going to be the bottleneck for what I'm trying to do, even though it's this is not something that I would actually ever do, if I'm being honest with you. I just wanted to see how far we could take it. But it played back completely fine up until I actually hit the space bar and stopped the video. And then as soon as I hit the space bar to start playing again, it's like it must have like pre-cached the timeline. And then I had problems. So then there was a little bit of lag and I was having all kinds of drop frames. And, and I'll show you that here. But um, I mean, it's unrealistic that I would ever put 24K streams on this, on a different timelines and stuff. So, so all in all, um, the NVIDIA card worked a lot better than my AMD card, despite it being less powerful on paper than the AMD card. So that led me to check out some of... Blackmagic's support documentation. So I ended up doing a little bit of research and I went over to Blackmagic's website and this is their supported formats and codex documentation that came out in July 2025. As of the making of the video, this is the newest version they have and it goes over all of the different formats and codecs that they support and how they support them for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So Linux starts on page 11. So if we go to page 11, you will see that these are all the codecs they support and how they are able to actually decode code them and encode them, whether it's natively or if you require a GPU of some sort, uh, like a specific GPU rather. And so if we scroll down, my Sony A7 Mark III records in H.264. And even if I convert that, because I have a script where I can convert it, it still lags. But you'll see here that it says GPU accelerated on NVIDIA graphics. Nowhere in this entire document does it say anything about AMD or Intel graphics. It's only NVIDIA graphics. And so even though this is for Rocky Linux 8.6, I'm actually running this in a distro box container using Rocky Linux 9. However, I, I don't think that that's affecting anything or impacting what's going on here. But yeah, 
So this was kind of the nail in the coffin for me. I think that I just need to get an NVIDIA graphics card of some sort and I probably won't have any issues. Feel free to, to let me know. So hit me up down in the comments if maybe there's some settings I can change or something I can install that would make my AMD card work better. Or if maybe you think I just need to do a full upgrade. I know Micro Center's doing some deals right now. I was looking at maybe just getting a whole new deal where I'm getting a new CPU, motherboard, uh, and then you know a new GPU as well. So I don't know if I want to spend that much money, but I think I definitely need to get a different GPU. But yeah, I appreciate you guys making it this far and taking a look at what I had going on. And, you know, if, like I said, if you got anything that can help me out on this journey, I'd really appreciate it. But that's about all I got for this one. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.